just one quick additional detail about uh, different types of hypotheses about how enzymes work. In the standard level syllabus, we learned about the lock and key hypothesis. Here I'm going to introduce you to one more. It's called the induced fit hypothesis. If you take a look at this boy and his dog, think about this. When you're going to hug somebody, you know, do you put your arms out in front of you in a fixed pattern? No, you, you open them wide and then as you get closer, you hug and then you wrap your arms around into a nice comfy fit right when you go hug somebody else uh, hopefully you're not hugging other people that's cheating but anyway, when you go hug somebody else you go arms wide open and then as you get closer uh, you wrap your hands around that particular person just as this boy has loved this dog this dog did something very good for this boy and so he will be forever grateful and uh, one day he may choose to help the dog when he is having trouble swimming in the local river this is called the induced fit model and the idea is that an enzyme and its substrate may not be exactly as perfect fit as we thought with the lock and key model but instead that as the substrate gets closer that the enzyme changes shape like the attraction between the substrate there could be some you know positive and negative charges here some hydrophobic or hydrophilic uh, kind of uh, attractions and stuff like that as the substrate gets closer that the enzyme kind of changes its shape, goes through a conformational change to actually fit the substrate in more detail. And then when the uh, substrate is done and it's been broken down to its products, that the enzyme reverts back to its original shape. Not a, a, an amazing like transformer transformation like from Megatron to, uh, what's that guy's name? Optimus Prime, right? But just a small change, you know, like a door opens or something like that. So that's the idea, um, the induced fit model. So it gives us some understanding of how enzymes, some enzymes can actually fit more than one substrate. And some poisons or unwanted things can also fit into the active site. So it's not may not be a perfect lock and key thing, but induced fit just means as it gets closer, uh, the fit is made to be more tight, like a hug, basically. So not a perfect fit initially. Initially, as the substrate approaches, the shape of the active site changes to fit. Um, various types of bonds are changing here. So weakening the bonds, reducing the activation energy, that may be a big part of it. Um, some enzymes, well, protease is just a general name for any enzyme that attaches and helps to break down protein. So some of these proteases have broad specificity. They can bind to more than one type of substrate so it's kind of like the lock and key thing it's too specific so we have to come up with another model induced fit seems to be okay because it seems to work with a whole bunch of different things so the induced fit model explains this phenomenon a lot better than the lock and key idea um, I think that's it a few diagrams that are showing the same thing so as the substrate gets closer you can see a, a conformational change happens to make a more better fit same thing here that does not look like a lock and key but when it comes closer voila it actually fits and it gets broken down and then the enzyme has done its job by lowering the activation energy to help speed up a chemical reaction that's it that's the induced fit model